What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out what was it like aboard the largest passenger ship of 1850, the SS Great Britain. I am super excited for this one guys. I've been wanting to explore ships in general for quite some time now and this seems like a really good ship to kind of start that exploration, if you will. Obviously, this is a Victorian era ship, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I believe the Victorian era was from like the early to mid 1800s to the early 1900s, I think. Um, I love the Victorian era in general, yeah. you know, specifically the architecture, but I also just find that era fascinating. Yeah, uh, I do. Just overall. I like the clothing. Yes, I, I like the clothing. I like everything about it. It was like this it was like this transition period where a lot of technological things were being invented and right. they were on the cusp of a, a big change in a way in the world. And um, I'm just really curious not only what it would have been like to kind of travel on a ship back then, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm sure for a lot of people it was the first time they were on a ship. Um, I'm curious about like, not only like what the quarters would be like, but also like how it would have been to like, what kind of food they had and what kind of technology, if any, like did I, you know, did they use oil lanterns, for example? I don't know. I, I really don't know much about I don't either. this type of thing. But it does fascinate me. Right. The idea of traveling by ship, especially back then. And, be, and before that. And even today, we've never been on, like, a large ship. Mm -mm. Have you? No. no. I mean, I've been, we've been on boats, obviously. Yeah, it's been boats. Right, right, but I've never been on, like, a cruise ship or a passenger ship right. like this. Um, you know, we've done some, like, we've we've took some sketchy uh, little boats between uh, Bali and New Zealand Bongan out through the uh, Indian yeah, Ocean there. and do that again. Stuff like, yeah, that was a little <laughs> bit, uh, yeah, that's one of the more dangerous currents in the world. <laughs> Um, but, uh, guys, I just think this will be really fascinating. So enough rambling. Let's go and jump in here and check out what was it like aboard the largest passenger ship of 1850. I'm very excited now because I've come to what is literally one of the wonders of the industrial world. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty. That is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Bill all right, guys, I'm sorry for pausing already. I just want to get another look at this ship from the front. Yeah, that was Wow. Really that is incredible. And the windows, would that be where the captain would be? Is it the front or the back? This kind of looks like the, the back front. to me, but I but I don't oh. know. I absolutely don't know. I don't know anything about boats. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't know a lot about ships. It's definitely why I want to, you know, start exploring this topic. But uh, that's just beautiful. I love the gold paint. I. Is this what it looked like back in 1850? Yeah, I'm sure it's probably been restored I would think, to right? look like. Yeah, this is incredible. The SS Great Britain. Wow, Bristol. Bristol. <laughs> Built in 1843, the masterpiece of the world's greatest engineer, Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel. This was the largest ship okay. in the world at the time. It was the most innovative and advanced, designed to carry people across the Atlantic at record speed. This is the grandparent of every modern ocean-going ship in the world. Wow, the grandparent of every modern ocean-going ship? Is yeah. that what he said? Yeah. Wow. And Isambard King Brunel, is yeah. that what he said? Yeah. We have been wanting to look into him for a really long yeah. time. Yeah, I think we will soon. Everybody's been telling us. Yeah, we've we seen a number to. of people that have said you've got to check him out. He was such a huge influential figure in for the world. Yeah, not just for Britain, but for the world. I don't know what all he did. I just know I he was he like had an to do engineer. With trains and, and obviously ships, ships apparently right. all transport. So that just goes to show us if this was the grand let's say the grandfather, grandmother of all uh modern mm -hmm. ocean going ships, then that means that he played a role in creating the modern ship in a way. Wow. Wow. This is awesome. This looks amazing, by the way, but I find it fascinating that I don't see any like big windows. Like, no. so it seems like when you're down below, you're going to you maybe a feel a little bit more claustrophobic. Yeah. I guess we'll see. What I like about the museum here and the team is that they preserved the hull as Look it was up there. in the 1970s in the Falkland Islands. They haven't given it oh to me. Oh my gosh. And it's being protected by this 
atmospherically controlled environment. It's that is incredible. By sucking water out of the sky. It's as cool. dry down here as it would be in the deserts of Arizona. And wow. Is, you get a sense of the experience and the age of the ship. It's been around the world over 30 times. Wow. It's done a million miles at sea. It's 175 years old. It's one of the most special ships in the long history of mankind's engagement with the sea. That is awesome. That is amazing. It wasn't just the fact that this ship was made of iron that made it so innovative. It was also the way that it was propelled through the water in a new, efficient, and brilliant way. Let's come and have a look at the stern. Until this point, <clears throat> steamships have been driven through the water by big paddle wheels on either side. Look how big this is. Brunel yeah, that's huge. insisted on using a brand new piece of technology at the time, meaning this is one the of propeller? the first ships in the world to use a propeller. Oh a my gosh. far more efficient way wow. of driving the ship through the water. And efficiency meant cheaper and faster. Up to that point in history, ships could take weeks and weeks to cross the Atlantic, and they were very much at the mercy of the weather. Now, the Great Britain could cross the Atlantic, driven by this propeller, at a steady 12 knots, in 13 days. Wow. Wow. Every ocean-going ship since has used one of these. Wow. Still today. That blows me away. Okay, so now I see why this is considered the grandparent of all current ships. And also why we have to look into yeah. Isambard King Kingdom? Kingdom, Kingdom I think. Brunel? Brunel, something like that. What a um, name, first of all. Yeah, I that, love that, it. Yeah, yeah, me but, too. But wow, I never would have guessed the first ship to use a propeller. That's crazy. 1850 and all ships since then. And before, I obviously know back in the day, it took a very long time. I think people were going for months. Weeks. I, weeks. Months, oh, probably. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it took like more than a month to cross the Atlantic wow. at one point. So they could do it in less than two weeks now. Wow. that that That's amazing. And you don't have to rely on the wind. Yes. Scrolling along these magnificent decks, I've got the sense of what it must have been like to be a luxury passenger heading across to New York. But one thing you notice very quickly on these decks is that as well as the funnel there for the, uh, the, the, the engine, there's also masts. This was a transitional vessel between uh, power and sail. Mm. So it was said that it was a steamship with auxiliary sail power. And that meant that if, in the event of there being a following wind that they could harness, they put the sails up, turn the engine off, and were pushed across the Atlantic for free. So they had so like a hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. <laughs> so this is the oh, look at that. Oh steerage goodness. compartment, the cheapest way of getting around. It was added not for the Bristol, New York legs, but for the times when this ship used to carry passengers all the way to Australia. You'd be stuck wow. in here with your neighbors for a long time. Oh, wow. Look at these bunks. Let's see if I fit now these bunks. Okay. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to be tall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. What in the world? That is, that's pretty tight. Oh man. <laughs> well, this would not be very comfortable for an 80 day voyage. Oh my goodness. 80, <laughs> Australia's going be good. 80 uh, day voyage. Well, Three months of sleeping in that. Okay, that looks this nice. Is how the first class passengers ate their meals. Silver service, champagne mm. glasses, fresh food. It's said that on the SS Great Britain, you would eat a higher quality of food than you would eat on land. Particularly the journeys were so short between Bristol and New York, you could actually take fresh provisions on board. And they mm. did have livestock on deck as well, so you get fresh eggs and milk. What? And That's then crazy. when the meal had finished, you could push this chair back into this position, and then you could then enjoy poetry, music, and drama recital. Oh, wow. What we're looking at here is a revolution in travel. Previously, <coughs> trips across the Atlantic would only be undertaken if people absolutely have to. They, would, they were miserable, they were dangerous. Now, suddenly, we're entering the modern era, a world we recognize so well. For pleasure, pleasure travel, traveling. Yeah. For recreation, travel for fun, travel for holidays. That's cool. Now, the brilliant team at the SS Great Britain have allowed us wow right down here behind the scenes into the heart of the engine. And it is extraordinary being here. It's being dwarfed by this three-story oh iron and steel beast. Cutting edge technology and driving this vast ship across the Atlantic at unprecedented speeds. And it's this engine that allows this ship to overcome the vagaries of weather, the weather that had restricted 
uh, all of the voyages across the Atlantic up to that point, suddenly the ship is able to sail on a regular timetable. It's dependable. This is the start of the modern world we're looking at here. The start yeah, of the modern it's world. Yeah. At this point, work highly unusual. It was very difficult to get engineers to work on these things, to find the right people, let alone build one, pack it into a ship and sail it across the Atlantic. It needed feeding with coal. It used about a ton of coal every four hours. Pretty every four hours? Wow. You could do wow. fire off a ship had been done. Now you're putting Dang. enormous <laughs> fires right in the heart of the ship. And you need men to feed those fires. So the coal was shoveled in to those furnaces there. Uh, it was between 40 and 60 degrees centigrade down here all the time. That's like oh. operating the Sahara Desert. Oh my goodness, look at this hot. six pints of water a day. That included them cooking and cleaning water as well, though. The only nod that they got, any special treatment, was that they were also given half a pint of rum to keep their spirits up. So that really adds the dehydration. Great. Mm -hmm. So this is great. From down here, you get a sense of what this poor old ship looked like when it was rescued from the Falkland Islands. It had been scuttled. It had been deliberately the Falkland sunk. Islands. It had come to a rest on the seabed, hence some of the holes in the side of the hull here. Wait, it was it shipwrecked? Shipwreck when it was rescued and brought back. Oh, wow. A, I didn't know that. Magnificent museum. And also down here, you get a clear indication of what Brunel was, was, was dealing with. Because this ship was longer than any ship ever before, because it was made of metal, that's putting new and unknown strains on the hull. He had to work out a way in which the ship wouldn't break its own back, just snap in half. And he did that by these, putting these box girders in here, right along the bottom of the ship from stem to stem. Mm. And he, he got these from building bridges. So what he's effectively mm. doing is borrowing his knowledge from these other fields that he was working on, and strengthened this ship, gave it rigidity, by effectively building a massive bridge right along the bottom of the ship next to the keel. Oh, that's incredible. What a guy. So this is the forecastle, <coughs> part of the ship right at the front, right next to the pointy end, the bows. Mm. And it was up here traditionally that the sailors would sleep. The officers might have slightly nicer education, but they would sleep up would there. Up here, right in the bows. Oh my goodness! Uh, and uh, this was a pretty tough place to be accommodated. You'd be uh, swinging on hammocks from these girders here, cheek by jowl, right in together. It'd be 130 members of the crew, so they were- Oh! And because it's right at the tip of the wow. ship, think about the way it goes over the waves, you'd be oh. close from the extraordinary- Oh my motion. gosh, You'd be going sea through sick. a huge angle up here, so you better not get seasick, or you oh, wow. you get used to it soon enough if you did. It's also very, very hot, not just all those other people sweating bodies damp from the, with the sea spray. Uh, it was also That's going crazy. through the tropics, encased in iron like this. The temperatures were <sighs> extraordinary, no, during that those parts of the voyage that the crew would be allowed to sling their hammocks up on deck. Wow. The epic climax of my trip on board SS Great Britain have arrived. The team have very kindly let me turn on the engine. So here goes. Oh, wow. Take that off and... There it goes. Wow, I'm surprised it's still in working order. Like wow. they've. It's so smooth. That, yeah. When you see it working, you just get a powerful sense of the the engineering skill that allowed Brunel yeah. to send yeah, that's the ship a feat. powering across the Atlantic at hitherto unimaginable speeds and reliability. It's so big, the whole ship must have shaken with the effort of uh, of this going round. Mm. This was incredible. That really was. Wow. I want to see more of it. I do too. I, and I, I want to know why it was shipwrecked in the Falkland Islands. Yeah, that's something else. That's another topic we got to explore. Mm -hmm. The Falkland wasn't there, Islands. Well, wasn't there like a war? Yeah. The Falkland Falklands War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything don't about know it. I it had to do with that, but... I know nothing about the Falklands. I know nothing about the, the Falklands War, so I don't, I don't really know anything about that area of the world. No. Isn't that down near South America somewhere? I'm not sure. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, guys, this was incredible. I mean, it's the first time I'm really getting an in-depth look at any ship like this, and 
it's kind of amazing when you really think about this really is the the grandparent of all modern ships. The first of its kind. This really was a big change from the old world to the modern world. It was that transition Mm -hmm. that allowed people to have pleasure travel to other areas of the world. Mm -hmm. Because like you said before then, you had to have a reason. on the weather to... And and you had to have a reason to go because it was so uncomfortable usually like to go for months. I mean, obviously for some, the steerage did not look very comfortable and where where the crew slept did not look very comfortable. I can only imagine how hot... It right. would be in there. I hope they were getting paid well. I, I don't know what he said. He said it in Celsius. I, I don't really know off the top of my head, but I can tell that's really hot. Um, I might have to look that up later. But um, this was incredible, guys. I, I really want to explore more topics like this. Yeah, I do too. I, I, it's I, not something I think about super often, but it is a topic that intrigues me. Yeah, very much so. There's there's a lot of like engineering topics like that that intrigue mm-hmm. me. Um, and, and I really didn't even know that they intrigued me so much until I started looking into things a little bit. For example, I never would have guessed, for example, a bridge, mm-hmm. seeing uh, the amazing engineering of a bridge and how the structure came together was fascinating. Yet mm-hmm. it turned out to be very fascinating. Yeah. A ship. This is just amazing. And, and I, I just see this like before this ship was built. It was like, I mean, you think about it. You think about how someone in this case, in this case, what's his name? I can't. Isambard. Isambard Kingdom Kingdom Brunel. Brunel. Like he just has this idea for this new way to power a ship. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it just comes out of thin air. And it's like, there's just, because of his thought and his, and his, um, just desire to make this happen. It changed everything about the modern world, especially when it comes to the way we travel. That's just yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Because and, the, and I'm surprised, honestly, that something invented in 1850 is still the standard today. I mean, like, right, right. It was that good when it was invented that it. I mean, I'm sure there's been some right. improvements and some changes, but overall, it's pretty much the same. Now, obviously, we don't know much of anything about newer ships either so like who knows is that i don't know how they're powered exactly but i think they're powered pretty much the same yeah. not with coal right but uh, generally speaking like the, you know propeller right um and uh and probably the same general setup i don't know guys we we would like to at least i know i would i think you would like to explore ships of different eras I'd like to even look more into this ship. Mm -hmm. I think this was just really fascinating, guys. Please let us know in the comments what you think we should check out next, whether it has something to do with this ship or ships in general, or if it's something along the lines of engineering and and that type of thing that you think we might find fascinating. Um, But I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey. Until next time, guys. Peace. Bye.